I used to think that color correction was a boring and tedious process, and then I learned you can do it almost perfectly in a matter of seconds. Stay tuned and I'll show you how. I used to think that color correction meant spending half an hour fiddling with the dials and knobs in the Lumetri color effect in Adobe Premiere, trying to figure out how to get the gross looking footage from my camera to look halfway reasonable before I started color grading it. In the back of my mind, I always thought that there should be some way to automatically calibrate it, where I should be able to hold up a color card of some sort and the system would just know what those colors should be and make all the appropriate adjustments to make it work right. Well, it turns out that's actually a thing and I just didn't know about it. This is the Spider Checker 24, which is a color card I found on Amazon for a reasonable price. And it turns out you can use this bad boy in connection with a plugin for Adobe Premiere to automatically color correct your video footage. To start with, you wanna hold the card as close as possible to the subject to make sure you're getting an accurate reading of the light on the subject. You also wanna make sure that there aren't any reflections on it. I'm trying to move it around here a little bit so it looks pretty good. And then what I'll do is take a snapshot of that footage in Adobe Premiere and use this plugin to automatically color correct. So I'm gonna start with the footage I take here in the studio, but I'm gonna also record some footage under other lighting conditions just so we can battle test this and see how well it works. Okay, the tool you're looking for is MBR Color Corrector. And it's this one here by Matthew Roberts, MBR Color Corrector 3. So we'll click on that. So this is MBR Color Corrector 3. If you find this janky looking old fashioned page, this is the right one. And it shows the supported color charts. So I have the Data Color Spider Checker 24, but you can also use the original Data Color Spider Checker, which cost more, but will probably give you better results, would be my guess. Um, you can also use the variety of x ray color checkers. The paid version actually lets you export a LUT, which is cool. That means if, you're do if you have kind of a standard lighting setup for your studio, you can just export the LUT and do the LUT instead of color correcting every time. Okay, let's hop over into Adobe Premiere and I will show you how to do this thing. Once you install MBR Color Corrector, it's gonna show up over in your effects panel here. Here's an example frame that shows the color card and you can see there's not a lot of glare on it, so it's in pretty good condition there. I wish I hadn't had my fingers over it, but it'll do for this purpose. So what you're gonna do is just pull the MBR Color Corrector 3 effect onto the clip that you want to edit. Then you'll hop in, you want to choose the color card because things get really wacky if you leave it on the default and that's not the one that you have. I have the Data Color Spider Checker 24, so I will select that. And you can see it updates to know what colors to look for. Then, and this is where it gets a little non-intuitive, but you click on Source and it gives you this map that you can kind of use to lay over the card. Now it does have this feature to find card in frame. I didn't find that that worked well for me at all. so. I couldn't, I couldn't get that to successfully actually find the card automatically. So maybe I'm doing something wrong there, but this is what I've been doing. I click on source and then you'll see these are color coded. So you can kind of figure out which way you line them up. I usually just remember that for mine, the one with the triangle is the cyan one in the corner up there. So I'm gonna grab that, move it over here. It's a little laggy, but that's okay. And then I just rotate this up here. This goes over here. I'm gonna try and miss my finger just so that doesn't throw anything off. Put this over here. And then we are just gonna hit read from frame and the magic is gonna happen. There we go. A couple seconds later, it is color corrected and that looks pretty accurate to me. So from there, now I can color grade, but just in those few seconds, I was able to take a clip and match this on it, hit the button, and then I can actually copy and paste this to any other clips that I have or to an adjustment layer and it'll apply that same correction across all of them. Okay, let's try some different scenes and see how this works. And I'm intentionally gonna mess up the white balance on some of these just to see if we can correct it back.
Okay, I think those results were pretty great. Now you have to remember, we're not color grading here. We're not trying to make this footage look awesome. We're just trying to make the footage look closer to what it was in reality and kind of get it to normal so that we can then do color grading from there. And the footage that you saw there, while it may or may not have looked awesome, it was a lot closer to how I recall those scenes being in real life. So after the color correction, it looked a lot more like I, the way that I remembered it. And the best part was it only took a matter of seconds to get there. I didn't have to spend forever playing around with the RGB curves, trying to figure out how to balance it back to where it, it was normally. It happened automatically. And it's not perfect. It didn't get everything 100% precise, but the trade-off of speed to result is pretty fantastic. And in the few cases where it was a little bit off, I could always come along later and, and spend a few extra minutes correcting those. Now I do want to point out this method can't work miracles. If you are filming with a very narrow spectrum of light, there's only so much color correction you can do. And to illustrate that, I'm going to turn off my main lights and put some gels over some smaller lights just so you can see a more monochromatic color scheme and then we're going to try and color correct it back. It's not going to work, but you can see the ways in which it doesn't work and kind of understand the limitations of this process, which are really just limitations of color correction in the first place. All right, so I've just swapped out my main lights for some little aperture lights with gels on them to get a warmer light so we can see what that looks like. So I'm going to hold this up. I'm going to check, make sure there's no major reflection on it. So this is the before shot, and here's what it looks like after color correction. All right, let's try the same thing with some blue gels. I don't know how far we can push this or how much correction it'll do, but we got to try it. So here it is. Let me get this aligned right. This is before color correction, and this is after color correction. So, as you can see, if you have a lot of color in the scene, you can kind of nudge those colors around and get them where you need to be. But in a case where those colors are kind of smushed together because of the narrow spectrum of the light, you can't stretch them back apart into beautiful, vibrant colors, at least not easily. So there are limitations to this process, and that's just color correction in general. Obviously, like anything having to do with video, you want to get it as close as you can in the camera and then do minor corrections later. And you can use a tool like this to get you closer faster and kind of nudge those colors around to where you need them to be. But it won't work magic. You can't take a scene that's only lit with a single green light bulb and expect to whip this up and all of a sudden it's back into vibrant color. There's just not enough data there to be able to do it. But for normal shoots where you're just trying to nudge the colors back to normal, a color correction card like this plus a plugin or software that can detect it and correct it automatically is going to help you and make things a heck of a lot faster than trying to do it manually. Now one final pro tip for those who made it this far into the video. YouTube watches your behavior to determine what kind of content to show you. So if you want to log into YouTube and see more video production tips, color correction, color grading, those kinds of topics, liking this video will tell YouTube that you want to see more of that stuff. Leaving a comment is an even better indicator. So I hope you'll leave a comment. I would love to hear from you. Tell me what kinds of topics you're interested in hearing more about and hit the like button so YouTube knows that you want to see more stuff like this.